What's happening, folks? Phil Prince talking about LIDAR and landslides, specifically in the Appalachian Mountains. I uh, started hearing a lot about LIDAR a few years back. It was used for archaeological reasons, looking at remnants of ancient civilizations in Central and South America. Provides a way to see through thick vegetative cover, see what the actual ground surface looks like. And if you're looking for ancient temples and excavations and things like that, works very nicely. It's just as good for finding landslides on forested slopes like the one that you're looking at here uh, in the middle of the screen. This is in McDowell County, North Carolina, and I've got a LIDAR overlay draped over the land surface that allows me to see what the bare ground looks like without the trees getting in the way. Uh, if you take that LIDAR away, of course, you see a beautiful forest and mountainside. We like to see this around here, but sometimes it obscures what's actually going on underneath there or what has gone on in the fairly recent past. And when you see a slide that looks like this, has this nice crisp scar where it's broken away and the material that slid still has a lot of fine detail on it, you get the sense that maybe this isn't that old and it's something that you need to be thinking about if you're living and working in this area. Now, this was not alone. We zoom out a little bit and slowly spin around and look at the other side of the mountain becomes pretty quickly apparent that there's no shortage of landslides in this particular part of the world. There's two more there, pretty good size one there with a big block of material, smaller slide there. And now this one in the middle of the screen is pretty interesting because it's quite subtle. Uh, it doesn't have a big deep scar like the first one we looked at, but it is very much there. This ground is very much displaced. You do see this sort of crack at the head of the slide, call this a scarp, and then downhill of that, you've got the toe where the moving material is kind of pushing up and making the land surface bulge and rise. If you're walking on the ground and you knew this were here, I think you would, you would pretty clearly be able to see it. I think if you did not have LIDAR and you were just cruising around, this would not be obvious to you. Now, to keep the, the tour going, Got another big one, looks kind of like the first one up there. Really everywhere you go on this mountainside, you're going to see some evidence of slope movement. I think this one's really interesting. Uh, it's pretty big. It's about 250 yards, I think, from one end to the other. So a little over 200 meters, something like, you know, 750, maybe pushing 800 feet. It's got this nice crack or scarp on the uphill side. And then down here at the bottom, again, you have this sort of faint bulge at the toe where the material's moving down slope and on the down slope end, it's kind of it's kind of pushing up like that. Now, down at this end of the mountain, there's another really dramatic kind of obvious looking one. If you look at something like this, again, with the LIDAR, man, no question that, uh, that there has been slope movement here. Um, despite how obvious this is, I would again say, based on my experience around here, if you were on the ground in the forest and you did not know that this were here, you probably wouldn't be aware of it. Of course, you don't really see any obvious disturbance to the trees there. And I would say most of the slides that you're looking at on this particular mountainside, there's another pretty good one down here. Uh, they're, they're quiet. They're what we call dormant right now, but they could easily be reactivated if you started building on or near one of them. And that's one of the reasons that it's really important to, uh, to be able to see the land surface like this. You look at this nice mountaintop here, Incredible view from up here. Uh, of course, you wouldn't want to put a house maybe right on top of that, but some of these flanks down here of the mountain would be pretty attractive spots to live. Now, this is a very subtle slide, but I assure you that if you cut a foundation into this, cut a new road grade along the bottom of it, something like that, have a roof pouring rainwater onto it, you could very easily start it to move in again. Uh, and that's going to be a real foundation problem in just a few years. And that's actually not uncommon uh, in this part of the country. And when you look at just the sheer number of these features on the mountainside, one gets the sense that maybe something here makes it a little bit prone to slope movement. So that's something that you want to bear in mind. Uh, the second reason that it's important to be able to see the landscape like this is actually related to what might be going on at the bottom of the mountain. If a slide like this up near the mountaintop occurs during a period of very intense precipitation, 
and that sliding material sort of fluidizes and turns almost into like a liquid or a slurry, it's going to turn into a debris flow. And that debris flow is going to come roaring down one of these stream channels, and that will be fatal if you're in the way of it. Extremely powerful, extremely fast moving, something that you can't stop, you simply can't be in its way. And knowing that something like that happens up near the top of the mountain, and you have a channel network like this coming down the mountain sides is very important as well. So LIDAR is not only just kind of cool to look at, uh, it's pretty useful for understanding how the landscape works and what you might have to deal with if you're looking to interact with the landscape in a particular area. And it's getting more and more common to see it publicly available. Uh, a lot of states actually serve up LIDAR imagery like this. Uh, the federal government does through the National Map Program. And being able to interact with it will let you kind of see the mountains in a different way. And certainly if you're one to interact closely with a landscape like this one, Western North Carolina is a popular place. People like being there, obvious reasons. But working with that landscape can have some challenges and you wanna be sure that you're aware of those. So anybody looking to deal with property on mountaintops or mountainsides like this, would want to hire somebody with experience in LIDAR interpretation and actually going out in the field and looking at features like this to see just what kind of instability problems might be present. And doing that will always, in the long run, not only improve public safety and personal safety, but end up saving you a lot of money as well. So check this stuff out. Uh, I don't know if Western North Carolina's counties are serving LIDAR like this publicly yet, but I would say that in a lot of places you are in the Appalachians, you can find a way to get a hold of this stuff and sort of see your world in a whole different way.